Hello everyone, my name is Amy and on behalf of the Academic Writing Education Center here at NTU, I welcome you to today's class on citation and referencing. So in today's class, we have several goals. First of all, I will introduce to you what is the differences between a primary and a secondary source. And then I'll go on to introduce the different type of citations that are used in different fields. Now, among all of the different types of information you might want to cite, we picked out three major items for us to introduce to you today, namely how to cite a book, how to cite a book chapter, as well as how to cite an article. After having understood what different citation can be used in these three major types of information, we then go on to some basic practice for you to check whether or not you actually understood today's lesson. And at last, we'll be introducing to you some referencing management tools as well as style guides for you to better comprehend how well your citation is going. And at last, some takeaway for today's class. So without further ado, let's start. What exactly is primary and secondary information? Now, primary information usually presents first-hand information. So for example, if today your research involves field study, you as the researcher went into the field and studied, let's say, birds. Now those will be primary information. Where secondary information will be information that will be presented by other people. So let's say you are a translator like me. Today, I want to study certain translations that are translated by a certain author, and that is my research. In this case, I will be using other people's research to back me up. And in that case, that will be considered secondary information. Now, regardless of which type of information you use, you must remember to use the correct citation that is corresponding to the field of your study. So let's take a look at what different type of styles there are. When we're talking about citation style, it's important to know that although there are many different types of citation styles, each discipline would adopt a particular type of citation only. Let's say APA. APA is commonly used in the field of, say, psychology or education. Now, in terms of MLA, usually literature fields, the arts or the humanities use them. And in terms of AMA, those in the medical or health field would adopt these type of citation style. Now, what is particular about Chicago in this case is that it is usually used with the real world issues. So say, news, magazines, newspapers, these are the type of field that would adopt Chicago as their referencing style. Whereas those in electrical or electronic engineering or use IEEE. So I guess the first thing you need to understand about citation is that you need to find out what field you're in. Now that should be easy, but what is tricky is for you to find out what citation your field actually use. So you can go into this particular lesson with a little bit of insight on how to implement citation well into your work to avoid the fault of plagiarism. So first thing we're gonna be looking at today is how to create citation for books. Now, first and foremost, in any citation work that you must do is to take note of all of the necessary information for you to create a valid reference or a valid citation. So things like the name of the author, the publishing year, the book title, or publisher, even the city where they publish in, are all perhaps necessary for your citation styles. Now, in some cases, some information could be potentially missing. It is your job as a researcher to do your due diligence and try to find all these information. Now, you have to remember, if you're using e-sources such as e-books or e-articles, ensure to include a DOI in your reference. Now, what is a DOI, you may ask? A DOI is a digital standardized method of identifying and locating particular resource on the internet. So a DOI will usually look like this. A line consists of number and alphabets that are unique to each individual article or ebook. Now, DOIs are usually commonly found with articles, but other type of online resources, 
such as ebooks or ebook chapters, could also have their individual DOIs. And a DOI doesn't necessarily mean the website of which the book or the article is present, but rather it is a unique identifier that usually appears on the top of the article or the PDF file that the article is in, and for you to use this particular code as part of your referencing. So a DOI will usually look like this. As you can see in Frontier in Psychology, you can see the publishing date, when it was published online, as well as its DOI on the top of the article. Now, since you have gathered all the necessary information, including the author's name, publishing year, publisher, etc., it is now time to create a citation and arrange all the necessary information together. Now, each style is unique in terms of where to arrange the information, but the necessary information are generally needed for all different type of citation styles. They just arrange it a little differently from one another to suit their citation preferences. So let's look at APA 7th edition as an example when you want to cite a book. As you can see on the screen, in an in-text citation, when you're citing a book, it will look like so. Within the parenthesis, you have the name of the author as well as the publishing year. While your reference list, which is at the end of your research, will look like so. You will have the last name of the authors, then publishing year, followed by the name of the book, as well as its publishing company. Next, let's look at MLA. In terms of in-text citation, you can see that it's a little bit different from the APA. While we still maintain the last name of the author, rather than the publishing year, now we have the page number. And you can see that in the reference list, it looks a little different as well in terms of how they arrange the publishing year as well as the title. Different italic size, different capital, where they put different comma and periods are all different depending on the style of citation you're using. Next, let's look at AMA. In terms of in-text citation, instead of mentioning the author's last name or the publishing year or the page number like MLA or APA, Instead, they just have a small number at the end of the cited reference, while this small number will indicate in the work cited or in the reference list what exactly is it. So the actual name of the author, unless you're quoting it directly within your text, it doesn't actually appear on the page, but rather just a small number indicating that this is a cited reference. Next, we move on to Chicago. Chicago is a bit more tricky. It looks like it has combined the merits of MLA and APA. Along with the author's last name, it also includes the page number as well as the publishing year. While its reference will look, again, a little bit more complicated than the other. At last, we have IEEE -E -E style. When we are citing it in this particular style, it doesn't appear on the page as well, much like AMA. But instead of a tiny number at the end of the cited reference, you have to put the reference work in a square bracket along with the sequence that the reference information is placed in in the reference material. So the citation itself won't actually appear in the reference work, but rather only appear in the reference list as so. Now that we're done with books, let's move on to the book chapters. Again, the first step is always take down all the necessary information you need, such as the name of the author, the chapter title, which is quite different from simply citing the book itself, obviously the title of the book, publisher, even the city and the state, and be very, very particular. You must ensure to include the page number if you are citing a book chapter. This is because you're not simply transmitting the concept of the book's main ideas, but rather the particular main ideas that particular chapters are trying to convey to its readers. And so when we are citing book chapters, make sure again to look over if whether or not they're electronic source. If so, include their DOI. And obviously in the second step, you arrange everything according to the style guide. In terms of in-text citation, when it comes to book chapters, same thing, 
you have the last name of the author along with its publishing year. In terms of the MLA style with book chapters, again, you will have the last name of the author along with the page number. Then with the AMA style, very similar to citing books, citing book chapters also has a tiny number at the end of the cited information. And then that tiny number would indicate its sequence or its order in its reference list. In terms of Chicago, always include the last name of the author along with the publishing year as well as the page number that you are citing. IEE style, like citing a book, when citing a book chapter, you will include it in a square bracket along with a number indicating its sequence or order in its reference list. Now that we're done with the books and the book chapters, let's go over how to cite articles. It's just a gentle reminder at this point. There are many information that needs to be cited and in great variety as well. You need to cite an interview, a field study, an experiment conducted, audiovisual file, and all different variety of multimedia forms. And so in this case, different form of information requires different type of citation. Today, we're just picking out three major ones. There are a lot more for you to explore. So now that we are done with a gentle reminder, let's look at how to cite articles. When you're citing article, obviously the first step, you're very familiar with it now, you must gather all of the necessary information from the reference material that you're using. And so remember, if they're electronic sources, you must include the DOI. Sometimes even, you must include the date that you have accessed the information as well. If there are particular journal or periodicals, ensure to include their volume number or their issue number as well. Now, when we are talking about DOIs, also keep in mind that not all articles will have a DOI. So before you compile your citation, make sure to check your style guide to see what can you do if a DOI is not present or you simply cannot find it. So when we're citing article in APA style, there is something you must be aware of at this point. So far, we all talked about a single author only. But as a researcher, you must know a lot of time you do not work alone. Teamwork is always better. So a lot of time there will be perhaps a second, third, or even a team of authors. But how can you fit all of their last name along with the publication year or even a page number onto the text? Wouldn't the entire text be crowded with the name of the author? In this case, you might shorten the team into simply one term called et al. So when we look at the screen, you can see the example, Olsen and his team. In this case, you will say Olsen et al. And then since this is an APA style, you will add on the publication year. Wouldn't that be a lot simpler and a lot easier to look on the text? In terms of MLA, when you're citing multiple authors, the same et al will be used. And so in this case, rather than the publishing year, as you know it, MLA will use the page number instead. Now with AMA, multiple author is still not indicated when you're using in-text citation that small number will still be used as part of your reference for in-text citation, while the reference list will have the full author as well as the information needed to create a proper citation. As with Chicago, how will we cite multiple authors? You guessed it, it will be last name, et al, followed by publication year, then followed by the page number you're citing. Alas, with IEEE style, in this case, multiple author would not be indicated when you are citing an article in an in-text citation. In this case, it will still be a square bracket followed by a number indicating its order in the reference list. So now that we're done with the three major type of information citations, let's put what you've learned into a small challenge from me to you. Are you ready? Let's go. Let's look at the following citation. Among the four different options, namely editor name, date of publication, publisher, and the book title. When you look at this citation, what do you see is missing? Let's go.
You guessed it right. It is option B, the day of publication that is missing. Good job. Next, let's look at the citation. Which one of the following is missing? Is it the day of the publication, the publisher, the journal title, or the page number? Good luck. Excellent. It is the page number that is missing. Now, look at the following citation. Is it the publisher, the editor name, the book title, or the date of publication that is missing? Let's go. Outstanding. It is indeed the book title that is missing. Next, again, look at the following citation. Tell me, is it the page number, the journal title, the editor name, or the volume number that is missing? I have faith in you. Come on. Excellent. It is indeed the journal title that is missing. So all in all, today we look at several different referencing styles. Now, with the advancement of technology, long gone are the days that we have to manually type in every single word and key in every single punctuation. A lot of times, different reference management tools or style guides are available online or can be downloaded as software to be embedded into our word files. And you, as the researcher, now simply has to collect and store this information correctly. And when it is time for you to cite these particular works, you can use these different softwares or referencing tools to help you cite better. Now, a lot of people will use EndNote, which is a great tool to help you keep track of your different research notes and be able to store the reference you will need for the further future. If you need help with checking or confirming different style guides, you can also visit the NTU library website for more referencing. So in today's lesson, again, we looked at different citation styles. Besides the fact that proper citation can help you to step away from the trap of plagiarism, detailed documentation of your references can also allow your reader who may be, well, intrigued by your work or intrigued by the different research you have mentioned in your outstanding work. In this case, your reader can gain more insight and explore more of the field of your research through your work and get in touch with other people's materials. So be sure that during the process of research, although you may be overpiling with books, articles, or journals, Ensure to detail document all of the information that is needed to create a proper citation style that only benefits you as well as your future reader and give the authors of these great research credit where it is due. I hope today's lesson has been valuable to you. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.